Getting started even earlier than usual, Google has dropped the first developer preview of Android 11 for the Pixel devices, minus the first gen Pixel phones. Being a developer preview, and the first of many no less, this version of Android is in no way stable or proper representation of what we'll see when Android 11 hits the markets. Let's take a look at what's new and changed. First, it's looking like native screen recording is finally going to be a thing. After teasing it during Android 10's preview process, but ultimately removing it before the final release, Google has introduced it in Android 11 Preview 1. Let's just hope it's here to stay. There are a few issues with the implementation, such as a bit of a delay before starting and a lack of internal sound recording, but it's high time we have a solid screen recording function on our phones. Android 10's dark theme has a fairly important feature that was lacking during launch, the ability to schedule it. With Android 11, Google addresses that lack by adding the ability to schedule the dark mode, whether that be with sunset and sunrise or to a custom time window. Excellent. One feature that everyone who travels with Bluetooth headphones will appreciate is a new behavior when it comes to airplane mode. Now, if Bluetooth playback is active, toggling on airplane mode will no longer cut the audio and disconnect your headphones. This is exciting. When it comes to pixels, we have a few updates. Motion sense in general has improved, having a much higher success rate and improved usability. In addition to that, there is a new pause gesture that has been added. To pause your music, you simply tap the air above the screen. Pretty nifty. Speaking of pixels and gestures, there's a hidden feature that brings back the much beloved rear sensor gestures that were lost with the removal of the rear fingerprint sensor. There's now a hidden feature codenamed Columbus that enables a double tap gesture on the rear panel of the Pixel 4. Very cool. For those who have devices with waterfall screens, Android 11 brings a new component to the Display Cutout API, allowing apps to have a safe area around the edge of the screen to prevent accidental input. The Do Not Disturb menu has been completely reorganized, with new people, apps, and alarms and other interruptions categories. There's quite a bit of granular control here, such as being able to determine who can call or text you during DND, allow certain apps to get through the DND wall, etc. There's a bit of an odd hidden functionality when it comes to media controls. XDA developers were able to enable a media controls in quick settings mode that seemingly replaces the typical media notification behavior we've seen in Android for a few years. As this was a very hidden feature that wasn't enabled by default and required modifying system flags, we're not quite sure if this is a feature that will be rolling out in earnest, or if it's an experiment that isn't set to be the new normal. Have you ever been filming a video on your phone and a pesky notification comes in, vibrating the phone and reducing your video to a distorted, jello-y mess for a second? Well, your woes have been noticed by Google on high, and a new API has been introduced that allows camera apps to mute incoming notifications while you're filming. A very welcome change. Android 11 cracks down on apps incessantly asking for certain permissions, and now blocks those prompts if they repeatedly come in. If you've hit deny on a permission prompt twice, the system will no longer allow the app to request that permission, treating it as a do not ask again. Background location access has been seriously restricted in a similar fashion to iOS's approach. Instead of the allow access while in use, allow access all the time, and deny options, the options are now only this time while using the app and deny. The newly redesigned share sheet from Android 10 has a new feature in Android 11, pinned apps. When you have to share a link, sometimes it takes a bit of time to find the app you're trying to share with. However, it's only a small handful of apps that you typically share with, so pinning those apps will make sharing so much better on Android. Google promised that scrolling screenshots would be a part of Android 11, and we're seeing the first inklings of this feature in this preview. It doesn't work yet, but the initial groundwork for the feature is there, and we're excited to see this feature working in a future preview. There's a hidden battery share menu activity in Android 11, discovered by XDA developers. Reverse wireless charging seems to be coming soon, probably to the Pixel 5. Interesting, but not at all surprising. Android 10 brought bubble notifications as a native feature, although it was buried in developer settings. Android 11 brings them out as a user-facing component of the Android 11 design. Yay? Yuck? I guess it depends on whether you're a fan of little bubbles all over your screen. I'm not the biggest fan. Conversations are now grouped in Android 11. In alignment with their continual tweaking of the notification mechanics, Google now has conversation-based notifications as the top priority notification category, bringing them to the top. An interesting adjustment, and hopefully it helps keep messages from getting buried in a mountain of notifications. Speaking of conversations, Android 11 now has new long press options, such as show, as bubble, favorite, snooze, or mute. These options don't seem to be quite finished, as the actual implementation doesn't seem to work, but it's a clear sign that Google is still refining the notification experience. Neato. Another discovery by XDA developers around the notification component of Android 11 is an experimental feature that separates notifications from quick settings. This is a very hidden feature with no easy toggle to enable, but it hints at a very major shift to the notification shade paradigm. Hi there, iOS. 
While this is another unfinished feature that doesn't actually work, there is a hidden gesture setting screen that allows the user to adjust the sensitivity of the back gesture. Much appreciated, as sometimes the back gesture is a tad too easy to trigger, at least in my experience. Well, that's all we'll be covering in this video, although there are many more changes in Android 11. If you want to learn more about the changes in Android 11, definitely check out androidpolice.com. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, as that helps a lot. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the Android Police channel. And if you'd like to subscribe to my personal channel as well, feel free to click on my face here. My name is Jackson Hayes, and this is Android Police.